Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. So today on this video, I'm gonna be taking you guys through some servicing and a little bit of installation and some new accessories I got for it. I got some after, awesome aftermarket pieces and some genuine Yamaha parts. But let's go ahead and take a look at them. So today, uh, I decided to show you guys the installation of these Weller Racing tie rods. So uh, I ordered these offline, obviously, from Weller Racing. I'm in Canada. So getting these was a massive pain in the butt, but uh, I'm happy I got them. Sadly, if you guys are up to date on some of my videos, I slightly bent my passenger side tie rod. So I decided to say, screw it, let's, let's upgrade. Let's get some different ones on here. Um, and I decided to go with Weather Racing. Uh, I am slightly worried that uh, going with these, I might have a little bit of issues being that if I hit something again or whatever, Maybe something else is going to give. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this, these products really encase. So inside here, uh, I've already opened this because I was way too excited. Uh, these actually came wrapped and stuff like that. Uh, but other than that, they've been uh, just picked up once or twice. So looking at it, these are going to be the joints that go in the rack and pinion. Once you take your OEM joint out, you go ahead and throw these in. They're pretty large, pretty beefy. I'm actually quite pleased with the uh, the build quality of these items and they look very well designed and they look tough. Uh, the tie rods themselves, what a gorgeous piece of equipment. Uh, I'm a big fan of the look of these. Um, yeah, I believe that it's an aluminum rod itself with uh, nice heim joints on them. Uh, this looks like it's going to be the, the, the knuckle side and this is going to go into the end of your rack and pinion. Uh, but otherwise the construction of these are fabulous they're really nice looking tie rods uh, nice that they come with the ends obviously um, so overall I'm, I'm quite pleased with the product of them they look great they're nice I already kind of briefly went over these installation instructions that they have here and uh, they do a good job summing up the instructions I'm quite happy with them it's all colored and whatnot but we'll get into that a little bit later when, once we get into these so, something else that I decided to do after, uh, not after, but genuine Yamaha, is I wanted to go with the rock sliders. Uh, one thing that really got me, you know, not wanting to go with these is the fact that I thought they were aluminum. I just never read, and they're full on steel. These are steel rock sliders painted uh, silver, which, to be honest, on my side by side, might not look the best maybe in the future i'll decide to paint them something else i'm guessing these are for the limited edition one that uh is blue and has a little bit more of that color scheme on them but i want these i ride pretty aggressive we go through a lot of nasty crap so i wanted to get something that'll help protect it because she's a little bit beat up and i want to try and avoid that but on the maintenance side of things uh one of the comments some of the comments i've been getting is squeaky brakes when I cleaned them all out last time, I realized that they were very low. So after my last ride, I decided that I'm just going to bite the bullet and go ahead and install a whole new assortment of brake pads. Uh, these are for all the corners, so I won't have to worry about it anymore. I just want to get them done and over with. And then another thing is uh, I'm going to do another oil change. I'm really keen on keeping my oil really clean in my R-Max. Uh, I just want it to be as reliable as possible and not have to worry about an engine failure due to lack of oil or breakdown of oil. So I ended up going with uh, the Yamo Lube Full Synthetic. Here in Canada, we finally just got this oil. Well, we've had it for, well, in BC at least, uh, we've had it for uh, several months now, maybe a little bit longer. And uh, I wanted to put it in my Grizzly. I had a 2019 700 Grizzly. I'll throw a picture of that up for you guys just to see what it looks like. Uh, but otherwise, I really wanted to go synthetic and uh, this is what I decided to go with and obviously a genuine Yamaha oil filter. Uh, I'm just pretty keen on keeping you know that stuff Yamaha. But all right everybody I'm going to get to it and I'm going to kind of give you a breakdown of just doing say one caliber caliper at a time and like one tie rod and one side of the rock sliders just so it's not too time consuming for you guys. But all right stay tuned everybody.
So I went ahead and got it up on a jack here and I got the crane holding it up. Let's go ahead and go over these uh, instructions real quick just to kind of see what entails to this whole tie rod uh, aftermarket replacement just, to, just so you guys can see. So taking a look at it here, it's pretty basic. Uh, you've got your boot, you got to take your clamps off. Sadly, one of them has to be cut is what they state in here. Uh, you know, normal, take your the tie rod end off with your nut and your cotter pin. Hope you guys can see that. And then the reason for having to cut the boot off is just the style. It's like a Odeker clamp in a sense. Uh, so we're going to just cut that off without damaging the boot. Otherwise, the other one is just a quick little snap style. And then once I get all that off, then I'll be taking the joint off inside here, which you guys can see a little bit better. And here, they tell you to use a tool to remove the uh, tie rod end easy. And let's get it to that point, and then I'll show you guys what's next. tie rod out I'm sure you guys can see that it's bent uh, still a little bit so I actually straightened this out um, to just to continue to do my ride the next weekend but uh, now we're gonna try and get rid of the get rid of this whole system and we're gonna get this you know weather racing kit put on so here's the joint right in here where that hooks right onto your uh, rack and pinion inside I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you the new joints so I just read in the instructions here that it states that the R mark is for the right side, L mark is for the left, which should be quite obvious. So right on here, it states R, so this will be for the passenger side. This guy's going to be for the uh, driver's side. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff installed and basically just kind of rip through it and go ahead and get this new tie rod installed and then I'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards. Well, I got these in. Uh, the boot actually was fairly easy to pop on and off. Uh, I just got little tie wraps, zip ties holding them on for now, uh, which is, you know, surprisingly what this company tells you to use while they're racing. Would have been nice if they would have supplied something else that was a much better fix. Plus, right here on the uh, joint that you go ahead and install, you don't actually get any really good sealing. Um, Nothing to really seal the boot off, so it's it's still kind of open. So we're gonna keep our eye on that and just see how that works out. Um, and right now I got the the tie rod just roughly adjusted, just to kind of how uh, they're steering. But we're gonna do a final adjustment 
uh, right when uh, I get everything back on the other side as well. And then I'll do kind of my own wheel alignment just to make sure this thing's steering right and I'm getting proper uh, left and right rotation out of them. But all right, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly jump to the other side and get all of it done. And I'll show you guys when it's all done. All right, well I got both sides done. I got everything tight. So just kind of a quick little recap for you. Uh, all following the instructions that were provided. Uh, the joint that goes inside, right inside the rack and pinion here, uh, is they require, they request that it is fully uh, red Loctite and also torqued to 72 foot pounds. So I went ahead and did that. Uh, and then I installed the circlip and the pin. I got the boot and everything on, zip tied. I got this end on, uh, nut and torque down. Uh, once I get it on the ground, I'm gonna do a final alignment and just kind of go from there. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the uh, rock sliders. All right, so I'm gonna get a, go ahead and start uh, doing the install on these uh, rock sliders here. So in the instructions, it uh, tells you that it actually wants you to move a bunch of plastic. I'm gonna see if I can kind of avoid removing uh, the whole front fender, just kind of loosen it up in here so I can get my hands in there. Same as right in here. I'm gonna see if I can just kind of loosen this inner piece out uh, to get my hands in, but uh, I'm gonna see what I can do. So I got the rock sliders on. What I ended up doing is uh, moving the plastic in here it's out of the way so I can get to the bolts. You'll see that the bolts go right on this side. Uh, they'll be like that on both sides. And then you have uh, this piece on the inside of the frame. So very simple for you to just go ahead and thread those in with your hands. You gotta kinda run your hands in a little bit. Just down in here, I'll grab a light so you can see wherever my light is. Down in there and then on this side just go ahead there'll be a factory thread for this one and then right in here you remove your little rubber your plastic collar and you go ahead and install this large steel one here and you just bolt them on pretty simple I did have to uh, ream out a little bit of the hole on uh, this side of the rock slider. Uh, it didn't line up very well. It may have been because something might have been slightly bent from all the use that I've been using it for, not too sure. 
but otherwise the lineup wasn't too bad and i'm sure they're going to serve their purpose now but i'm going to go ahead and install the other one and you guys will see me back doing the uh the brake calipers in the rear all right well i got the uh, passenger side on it went way faster than the driver's side i just pre-reamed the holes out uh in the back here the three little holes uh just to make it a little bit simpler so that i don't need to worry about them anyways reamed them out. glad i did uh fit in like no problem front fit in as well with no problem uh this side literally took like five minutes the other side i spent way too long on but i'm gonna get the front wheels back on and then uh, i'm going to do the rear calipers and then I'm going to do the oil change and fire it up, give her a little run around, and I'm going to do a quick little wheel alignment. So, pretty basic to take apart. Uh, a lot of people might actually take the whole caliper right off the bracket. I'd probably recommend not doing that. Go ahead and go ahead and crack your caliper loose. You're gonna have uh, a nut right in here. This is actually your slider. Uh, just make sure you hold this tight, and then crack your nut off here. Other than that, uh, your caliper will just slide right out. Once you get your bolts out here. I take these apart quite often just to clean all the crud out and stuff. Yeah. Here's your piston, your caliper. Just come right out. Just lay it off to the side. Then here's your pads. Here are my pads. So my rear pads here. Uh, so they're almost metal on metal. I'm gonna go ahead and change these out. and then they just slide right back in right into your your sliders So there's a quick on how to do your uh, brake pads on the caliper. I'm sure you guys might have seen. Uh, I put a little bit of uh, brake lube on it as well. Uh, I'm a thorough believer in it. I find that it helps get rid of the squeaks and the OEM units don't seem to have it or if they do it's long gone. Uh, so this is the stuff that I use. It's a Yamaha uh, brake caliper grease uh, and it works fairly well. Maybe that'll focus for you guys. Not too sure, but it's a uh, high thermal conductive with stands temperatures up to 400 Fahrenheit. Uh, it's just good for heat and it helps down on the noise, but I'm going to go ahead and just get the other side swapped over and get the fronts all finished up. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the, the oil change. All right, I got the tie rods done. They're all in and I got it all adjusted for my uh, tow in and camber and all that. Got the wheel alignment done. Got the rock sliders on. I got the brake pads all done. Uh, the rears were way worse than the front, uh, but I ended up doing them anyways. Yeah, I don't really see me keeping the other ones. But uh, now I'm going to go ahead and warm the machine up and do the uh, oil change procedure. 
I know a lot of people uh, believe that it's a massive pain in the butt. But I have it right here. It's really not too bad as long as you follow it uh, appropriately. It's actually very simple. Yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of strange that there's so many different drains. Uh, there's the one in the reservoir tank in the back, and then there's four. Uh, there's going to be two in oil lines, and then there's going to be two drains on the actual bottom of the crankcase. But I'll show you guys though once I get there. All right. So once you've done your warm-up procedure. Uh, you're going to want to first drain your oil tank, your oil reservoir for the dry sump system. Uh, get yourself a little funnel, whatever you can find, just so that you don't make a mess. And a tank underneath. You want to go ahead and uh, just break this guy loose in here. You got it broken loose. Just be careful. Be a little bit hot. The bolt's fairly long. So be prepared. There'll be a little copper washer on there. Go ahead and pull that sucker off. Try your best to catch it as well. And I'll just start draining myself. I guess I really didn't have to change my engine oil, but. I ride it hard, it's time to be changed. All right, I'm gonna show you guys uh, uh, all the other drains, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, drain those, uh, and then just show you guys where they're at. All right, so I'm gonna take you guys underneath the arm axe here, and just show you where some of your uh, drains are. So your first two are these oil cooler lines right here. Uh, not much comes out of them, but you wanna let those drain for quite a while. And then uh, your other two drains are going to be more to the back of the unit here, right, right in here. So not that little 8 mil there, it's going to be the larger ones, I believe they're 12 mil heads. Uh, you're going to want to drain both of those, those will carry, uh, hold quite a bit more oil in them. And let those drain for quite a while as well, knowing that the R-Max takes about, I believe, 4 liters of oil. Uh, let her drain for quite a while. So you can get all of it get all of it out. All right. So once you're all done getting all your drains, you're gonna to want to come back in here and take a look. And right here is gonna be the oil filter. Uh, I've heard lots of people actually complaining about uh, the location of it and that it's difficult to get at. Uh, but for me, I find I can get my hand right inside this wheel well fairly easy. And just to see how easy I can do this. Uh, I'm going to just show you guys how easy. Let's grab myself a pair of these. See if I can do this here for you. Well, also holding the camera. Alright. I'm going to give you all a different angle here. Okay. So this is with me also holding a camera in my right hand. So as you see, I can get it off. Uh, but I'm gonna move that oil pan and I'll fully get it off. So hold on one sec. Ooh, that's gonna cover it there for me. Before I fully, fully take this right off, I'm just going to let it drain into the bucket a bit. Just to try not to get any oil on our skid plates. So that just makes it a freaking mess. Get a better angle here. Yeah. I'm going to get this all cleaned up and get the oil change all done. And then I'll be back. Stay tuned. Alright, so I got the oil change all done. I went ahead and I put about uh, one liter, uh, one and a half liters kind of uh, in the engine itself going down to the crankcase, as per the manual says. 
and then I put two liters in the uh, oil reservoir. I just ran it, I'm going to let it sit and I'm going to double check the oil. Uh, normally when I do that I end up adding another 0.5, like 500 mils to the crankcase and then I'm right around that uh, uh, 4 liter mark of oil. But alright, I'm going to quickly do that. And otherwise for that, that's going to be the end of the video for today guys. Uh, I just really wanted to show you guys the new awesome uh, welded racing tie rods they got. Those things are fantastic, I hope they hold up well and I just hope I don't have any issues with the other stuff. The Yamaha rock sliders. Love them, great. Yeah, that closes all the time. Uh, I got a load of tools in here and tons of weight in there so the little rams can't hold it. But yeah, the rock sliders, love them. Uh, brake pads all around, needed to be done. Wanted to get them done. Service, uh, I'm only really, I'm not even at like service intervals. Uh, what am I at here? Let's just double check. Uh, 1100 kilometers. Um, so like it wasn't really due, but uh, I really wanted to make the swap to uh, full synthetic but uh, just uh, if you guys are really enjoying the videos and stuff like that consider uh, leaving a like uh, commenting I love the comments guys continue up on the comments uh, I'm more than willing to help ask anybody any questions about these machines I do know a fair amount about them I work at a dealership currently um, and also consider subscribing uh, it really helps me out and it, it's it's going to be awesome having more people watch what these machines can do. These Yamaha R-Maxes are fantastic machines. And also just the group that we ride with. We ride with a vast amount of different machines with um, at Island Mudslingers here. And uh, we don't really discriminate against any machines. We love all of them. And uh, we love going out and seeing what these things can do. And uh, it's fantastic. But uh, stay tuned, everybody, because I got some more cool stuff coming for this R-Max. I have actually ordered new tires for it. Don't get me wrong, I love these ITP cryptids. They're wicked tires, they measure fairly well. But my only problem is, I like to play on the rocks a little bit too much, and these tires really aren't the best for rocks. They're really stiff, they're really, really hard tires. Um, but overall, they do great in almost everything else. I have no complaints about them. So I, I actually ordered uh, another brand of tire, not ITP, but you guys can wait until I uh, introduce those to you guys. Uh, the tire's been out for quite a while. They've been doing really, really well. And I've ordered a 32. Uh, so once I get those tires, I will obviously be letting you guys know when I get that. And also, I'm going to eventually be ordering a, a proper, a dual rate spring uh, setup for my Fox 2s here, my QS 3s, because uh, this single rate setup uh, just isn't working. As you see, that top spring is just fully d like compressed. It's, it's doing nothing. And like the rear, it's it's just just about to get depressed so uh just stay tuned everybody and uh like i said thanks for watching i really appreciate everybody's support and uh hopefully you guys will stick around and all the people that are new around here uh, i hope you guys all enjoyed have yourself a lovely day see you next time